This video reviews conceptual and operational definitions and gives you an example. So first of all, we're talking about psychological constructs. So we don't have definitions um, or ways that we can directly measure things like personality traits and attitudes, emotional states. If I say that I want to measure how happy you are today, I need to define how I do that. And so we're going to start with a conceptual definition and then use that to make an operational definition. Again, these psychological constructs are what we work a lot with in psychology. Um, so psychological research will often involve these constructs that we create um, to measure the unmeasurable, right? And it's not perfect, but we do the best we can and we justify the choices that we make and we look at how um, reliable and valid they are, which will be in a future video. So um, our next step is we need to choose a construct uh, and we need to give it a conceptual definition. So a concept is just the way that we think about something. So you could talk about happiness as feeling good and positive and optimistic. Whatever you decided as the researcher, you choose the conceptual definition of what you're measuring. So this um, conceptual definition gives us uh, information on what we're studying, but to actually study it, we need to operationalize it so that we can measure it in some way. So operational uh, definitions, they are just, they're the way that we measure. They're our measuring stick for this unmeasurable construct. So conceptual definition, again, is just how we define it in a general sense. Um, and we'll get much more into detail on your uh, variables that you're defining for your study. You'll be working on that in lab. But for right now, I really want you to focus on how do you make it operational? How do you measure it? There are a lot of different ways to do that. You could do a self-report. You could go up to people and say, how happy are you right now? Happy? How happy were you 15 minutes ago? Um, not a great example, but just to, it's, you're literally, they're just reporting on themselves, right? There's also behavioral. You could watch them and see how they behave. And you could um, have a list of happiness um, characteristics and you check them off on your list and you say, okay, I observe these characteristics. This person um, is happy or not happy. There's also physiological. So physiological, we're not going to do in lab because we don't really have that capability. It's not feasible for us. It's not doable in the context of this class. But um, some different ones we've talked about so far, we talked about measuring stress by looking at cortisol levels. Um, you could measure stress with blood pressure. You could measure love with um, dopamine levels or with oxytocin. So it's some things are you can't measure physiologically, um, but again, we're trying to get at this deeper idea of a psychological construct, something that we can't ob uh, observe directly. So let's use an example. I'm going to use this throughout the series of videos. So narcissism um, is a psychological construct that is studied pretty frequently. So we need to say, what do we mean by narcissism? What does narcissism mean? Um, maybe it is excessive interest in or admiration of oneself, um, inflated sense of one's own importance, lack of empathy for others, excessive need for attention and admiration. You could add to this and you would have this idea of what it means in the general sense. What is narcissism? What are we trying to study? But again, we need to go that next step. And so we have our conceptual definition. I could say that narcissism is when an individual has an inflated self sense of self-worth, is overly interested in themselves, has excessive need for attention, and lacks empathy for others. So this could come from a lot of places. You could look up the actual definition. Um, you can Google it. There's psychological construct definitions. You could come up with your own definition, depending on you know, what it is. Of course, you want to be, you want to capture the variable that you're interested in, but it's just the concept of it. What does it mean to you? And then we need to come up with a way to measure it. So this is an example of an operational definition for narcissism. So this um, is the NPI, it's the Narcissistic Personality Inventory. It's very popular. It is a self-report measure where people are asked a series of questions. So they have 40 paired statements and they choose the one that's closest to how they feel. So this is the actual phrasing that's there. There are 40 paired statements for each, cho for each choose which one is closest to your feelings. And here's some examples. 
So the first one, um, you're supposed to choose either A, I have, oh no, I have a natural talent for influencing people, or B, I am not good at influencing people. And then for the second one, they choose A, modesty doesn't become me, or B, I am essentially a modest person. Now, this example only has two options. We've talked about different ways to measure, but you can see that this um, A, I have a natural talent for influencing people. If they respond to that one, that's the one that is closest to their feelings, that's a point toward their narcissism score. Um, if they are essentially a modest person, that is the opposite of narcissism. So that would not be a point towards, um, towards their narcissism total. So all we're doing with this operational definition is we're saying, this is how we're going to measure it. We're going to use this. So it might be the um, score on the NPI. It could be their answer to a yes, no question. Um, if it is like race and ethnicity, it could be their self-reported race and ethnicity. So the key is that you are specifically saying this is how this is measured. And I'm going to show you the data so that you can um, you can see what I'm talking about, but you use this to create a total score. So you collect the data. Participants get a zero or a one for each question. The NPI tells you which questions get a zero and which questions get a one or which response gets a one and which one gets a zero. You add their responses together and get a total. And then we use that to define it. So if a person has a low score, they're low in narcissism. If a person has a high score, they're high in narcissism. So an operational definition in this example is their score on the narcissism scale, on the NPI. So that is, again, that operationalizing, you're creating something that you can use to measure this difficult to measure construct. So I'm gonna pull up the data here just so that you can see again what we're doing, how we get this score. And I'm gonna use SPSS, which we're gonna um, be using throughout the semester. I have some um, data in SPSS. So this is, uh, this is part of a real data set. And what we have here is we have participant number. Normally you don't need a participant number, but I put it there just for clarity. Um, we have, all of these participants' responses on the first question on the NPI. So here you can see this is NPI one. And so person number one responded with a one to question one. They, uh, person number two responded with a zero to question one. So you can see that this, um, this is a, a single uh, question right here by each person here in the rows. So this is the data view. In the variable view, you can see that we have all the variables here. So participants answered questions one through 40, because there's 40 questions on there. And then we created a total score, an NPI total score for time one. I'm gonna use this in a later video to talk about reliability and validity. So I'm gonna come back to this a little bit more. But I wanna show you that what we did is we say, okay, this person, participant two, I'm gonna to add together all their responses. They got one, two, three, um, just counting all the ones that are in here. I'm not gonna count all of them. I'm gonna let uh, SPSS did it for me. This is my total. So this person got a nine on the NPI. The minimum score is uh, zero and the maximum score is 40 because there's 40 questions. They can answer zero or one. And so this person's score has been, their, their, their narcissism level has been operationalized as a nine. So we've measured it and come up with a nine. So here, just to bring this back together, the conceptual definition is what the variable is. It's the concept of it. What are we measuring? And then the operational definition is literally how we measured it. And it's the score on the narcissistic personality inventory. So future videos are going to explore narcissistic personality inventory a little bit more um, to give you some practice with the reliability and validity and some other um, ideas like levels of measurement. So hopefully this helps.